Once upon a time, while the king of kings, Jamshid, rules over Iran Zamin, in the vastness of the plain, in the land of Tazian, there lives a pious ruler whose name is Mardaz. Tormented by fear of God, Mardas devotes his life to charity. He owns many herds of cattle and gives their milk away to anyone who needs it. Mardas has a son named Zahak, a youth who has not benefited at all from love. Zahak is ambitious, impulsive, and corrupt. He owns 10,000 horses and spends most of his days in the saddle seeking fame and glory for himself. One morning at dawn, Iblis appears in the guise of a friendly well-wisher. He approaches Zahag and charms him with kindness and words that sound very wise. Young Zahag is impressed with what Iblis has to say and gives him his full attention, unsuspecting of the stranger's ill intentions. Iblis, thrilled to see his victim so easily captivated, tightens the trap. I have much more to say, so many secrets to impart, vast knowledge possessed by no other. O oh, great man, Zahak replies, teach me this knowledge without delay. Iblis says, first, you must pledge your allegiance to me. Then and only then shall I speak to you and guide you. Zahak submits, surrendering his mind and his heart. I shall heed all you have to say, and never will I reveal your secrets to anyone. Iblis then says to Zahak, why should anyone but you govern this land? Why should your father remain in power when there is a glorious son like you? Mardas has ruled for a long time. Now it's time for you to cut short your father's life and take over his position and his power. If you heed my words and stay loyal to me, you will rise and rise to become king of the whole world. Zahak is troubled by the prospect of murdering his own father. But Iblis reminds him of his pledge of allegiance, then offers to do the deed himself. All I ask of you is your consent and your silence, he says. Zahak agrees, and that very night, Iblis digs a deep ditch in the garden of the palace, covering it with branches and leaves. At dawn, when the sky is still dark, Mardas walks down the garden path to do his prayers, and not seeing the ditch, he falls in and breaks into pieces. In this way, the traitorous Zahak seizes his father's throne and becomes ruler of Tazian. Iblis departs, soon to return with the next phase of his scheme. This time, Iblis approaches Zahak, disguised as a virtuous, intelligent, well-spoken youth addressing him with words of praise. Your Excellency, I am a renowned and inventive chef. May I be worthy of serving you? Intrigued by this offer, Zahag hands this chef the keys to his royal kitchen. 
Up to this point, humans have only eaten what grows from the earth. But Eblis begins to devise new concoctions using the flesh and blood of slaughtered animals. One by one, he feeds these to Zahak, making him ferocious as a lion and hungry for more flesh and blood. With every sumptuous dish, Zahak becomes more enamored of this new chef. You've served me well. I wish to offer you a reward. Anything you desire, I shall grant you. The chef replies, O oh, great king, seeing you fulfilled is my true reward. But I do have one small wish for your highness to allow me to kiss your royal shoulders as a gesture of gratitude. Zahak replies, I shall grant you this wish, so that it may bring honor to your name. Eblis touches his lips to Zahak's shoulders, and then he suddenly disappears, vanishing into thin air. Just then, from Zahak's shoulders, two black serpents sprout out, hissing and spitting venom. Shocked and distressed, Zahak casts about, seeking any remedy. Finally, he resorts to severing the fearsome snakes from his shoulders, but to no avail for the two snakes sprout up again and again, like two black limbs of a tree. All the eminent physicians are summoned, but no matter what tricks they try, the snakes live on, thriving and strong. At last, Eblis appears again, this time pretending to be a doctor. He says to Zahak, You cannot destroy these snakes. You must let them be and keep them calm with food. There is no other remedy than this. But beware, you must feed them only with human brains. Appease these snakes with such nourishment until they eventually perish. And so it is that every day two innocent youths are captured and killed, their brains turned into food for Zahok's snakes. Look and see, what did Eblis really seek in his dealings with Zahok? What did he want to accomplish? What else? but a secret ploy to wipe all humanity from the face of the earth. Meantime, in Iran Zamin, Jamshid has lost sight of his divine inspiration. And so, his glory dims, his power wanes, and there is chaos in the kingdom. The people wish for a new leader, a strong man who can rule with an iron fist and bring an end to the turmoil. Before long, a delegation from Iran Zamin heads for the land of Tazian. They approach the fearsome Zahak and invite him to become the new king of Iran Zamin. Zahak travels as swift as the wind to Iran Zamin and coronates himself. Jamshid flees, abandoning the throne. But eventually, Zahak finds him and saws him in two. As Zahak ascends the ultimate throne, the world from end to end bends to his will, and a new era begins. 
the ways of wisdom are now renounced, while lunatics find fame and glory. Virtue is despised, and sorcery is exalted. Truth retreats and becomes concealed, while harm and destruction are openly inflicted. The hands of thieves reach out with impunity, carrying out evil deeds, and all that is good is not spoken of except in secret. Zahak rules for a thousand years, a dark millennium of terror and oppression, when women are forced into his service and dissenters are put to death. But in the end, Zahak dreams of his own demise, a dream that foretells his downfall at the hands of a steadfast youth named Feridun, a fearless metalsmith named Kave, and the awakened, courageous people of Iran Zamin. <laughs>